Welcome everyone, it's the Crypto Lark, and I'm here in Sydney, Australia at the EdCon event. And I've got Tegan from Orchid with me. Welcome. Thank you, great to be here. Now, let's start off with what are you guys doing? For anyone sure. who doesn't know about Orchid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Orchid is a decentralized VPN. Mm -hmm. We are built on top of Ethereum. So we're working to open up the internet to everyone. Uh, our co-founding team is comprised of Seven Waterhouse, who co-founded Pantera. He uh, took RPX public and has been in the cryptocurrency space since 2013. There's also Jay Friedman, who created Cydia, which is the app store within jailbroken iPhones. And then Brian Fox, who's been in the open source state, uh, space predating Bitcoin, so for about 20 years now. He's the author of Bash. And uh, also Gustav Simonson, who is a white hat hacker for Ethereum. He helped a lot uh, in securing Ethereum, helping after the DAO was hacked. Uh, to, to secure the network. So yes, we're actually, we're launching in June. So we have been developing for about two years now. And uh, yeah, finally at the final final frontier. Nice, I just gotta say Pantera, I love that band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pantera Capital, of course. Now, <laughs> privacy on the internet, mm. I feel like it gets worse and worse every day. You know, mm -hmm. you look around, you see the new laws being passed, you see the, the big social media platforms all in bed with government and all this stuff. So. Uh, on a personal level, what do you think are like the biggest threats right now to the internet as we know it? Yeah, I think it depends on where you live. Uh, in the West, we're kind of in a bit of a bubble. Um, but, you know, that being said, a lot of corporations dominate. Uh, and like you have the big five, so a lot of the big tech companies controlling the media. Uh, and then also, if you look in Russia or China, uh, it's more corporate dominated. So I would say it definitely depends on, on where you are. And of course, just here in Australia recently, they uh, passed, the government passed a law that can force app developers yep. to have to build back doors. And if those app developers don't do it, they can face fines or imprisonment. And if the app de developers tell anyone that they were mm -hmm. forced to build a back door, and they can also face fines and imprisonment. So yeah. that's like, even in the Western countries where, you know, we kind of think that we live in some kind of relative bubble, mm. there's still all this stuff absolutely. going on in the backgrounds. So it's absolutely yeah. crazy. Yeah, and one interesting statistic is actually that 60% of the free apps, free VPN apps on the App Store are based in China. So you can almost assume that they go. do have that, that back door. There you that. go, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, where did the internet go wrong? This is what I'm always trying to think about, and I know mm. some of the reasons, but I'd like to hear it from you, because obviously yeah. you're, you're really involved in it, but we were driving down this road, we're like, oh, the internet, this is going to be so great, and then we made a wrong turn. Where was that wrong turn? Yeah, so I think the internet kind of wrongfully taught us that things should be free. And, you know, for those of us that have taken an economics class, we know that there's no such thing as a free lunch. Mm -hmm. I think that because the internet has to, the database has to be owned, that gives us this degree of centralization that we see on the internet today. And this has caused a lot of, a lot of the, the uh, governments controlling the media, the uh, monopolies that we see. Uh, in the states and and across the globe. Now, obviously, uh, Orchid's really kind of focused on you know decentralized VPN. But what do you think about some of these projects, like for example, Made Safe? And there's a whole list of other mm -hmm. names we give here. They're actually trying to decentralize the internet overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's a, an admirable admirable mission, and we at Orchid would like to plug into anyone with with that similar similar mission. Mm. Very very cool. It's I, I feel like we're at this stage right now where we can build, without a doubt, a better internet of the mm -hmm. future and that decentralization and cryptocurrencies can all be in a very important part of making that future internet that will basically lead us down the road of a utopian society versus like if we leave governments to mm -hmm. be in charge of things, well, we all know what's going to happen then. But all this goes on. You know, you and I can sit here and have this conversation and say, hey, look, there's all these weird things going on on the internet, but most people mm. are still not using VPNs. I mean, what's maybe you know the percentage but globally, what kind of percentage of people are actually using VPNs? So VPN usage is rising. It, it's dependent on the region. So some places it's as high as like 38% uh, admitted that admittedly use VPNs. That's actually sure. pretty high. Yeah. yeah, and yes, yeah. So VPN usage is, is on the rise. Mm. That's pretty cool, actually. So it's, it's good to see it's on the rise. And I guess that really shows that more and more people are waking up to the realities of the internet as it is right now. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's definitely pretty cool. Now, it, the idea of a free internet, you know, where you can find information and have relative censorship resistance, does this, 
does this concept even really continue to matter if you, if I mean, 38%, that's kind of the upper limit right now, and it's increasing mm -hmm. all the time, which is definitely good, but let's just, that means that there's, what, 62% of people who are still using the censored version of the internet mm -hmm. or are being totally tracked by mm -hmm. Google and their governments and everything else, so it, does it matter so much if we have this free internet if most people are staying on the non-free internet? Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's a good point, and I think, I think it does matter, right? And I think that we will see that ratio start to, to switch. And as education on VPNs and privacy kind of increases, um, I think that ratio will definitely switch. But it's sad that it, it almost takes someone being burnt or learn, learning of other people being burnt yeah. in order to kind of get your privacy under control. Yeah. And so I guess what we're looking at here is ORCID's kind of a decentralized VPN network, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, what does that actually mean, a decentralized uh, VPN network? Yeah, so the nodes are distributed. So there's no one central point of failure. So with these VPNs, like we were talking about, how some of them do track data, we have no way of knowing if the node will, if the exit node will track the data, but there's no central point where we can uh, aggregate that data where it would, would matter. Uh, so, yes, yeah. So I know that uh, VPNs have been quite popular in China, for example, and decentralized networks have this interesting way of being very hard to stop by governments. I mean, we mm -hmm. can see Bitcoin right now. You know, China's tried to crack down on Bitcoin, and mm -hmm. yet Bitcoin, it just, there's now a giant black market for Bitcoin. Yeah. They didn't stop it. Mm -hmm. So with something like Orchid, I mean, is this going to be able to go through the great Chinese firewall? That is the mission, that's the goal. Yeah, and we've tested it and it has. The one interesting thing about Orchid is that our cl our code is pl pluggable. So for example, if a firewall is able to shut down Orchid, the user is incentivized not only by helping, not only by getting access to the internet, but also by uplifting the entire network and helping them get around that firewall. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously we're here at the Ethereum mm -hmm. conference, but there's a lot of blockchains, <laughs> not just Ethereum. I don't know if you heard about those other blockchains, but there's some other ones out there. What was the choice of choosing to go with Ethereum mm -hmm. over another blockchain? Because I've yeah. talked to some other guys today and they're a little more involved, but I mean, you know, you're a dApp building on top of mm -hmm. Ethereum, so why mm -hmm. the choice for Ethereum? Yeah, many reasons, but Ethereum is really the only decentralized option at the moment. And with what we're building at Orchid, it's pertinent that we are decentralized, so. Yes, we love the Ethereum community and everyone is so invigorated here. And now with Orchid, so I mean, when I pay for uh, VPN services, will it mm. be mandatory to pay for those in cryptocurrencies? Will I need to use the Orchid cryptocurrency to pay or can I use Ethereum? So you can, you will have to use Orchid, uh, the Orchid token, mm -hmm. um, but you don't need, there, we have on ramps for fiat as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool, it's interesting. Um, Obviously, the on-ramps for fiat are great, but I think the payments in cryptocurrency are really important, especially, obviously, yes. once we see, like, we, we do have um, zero-knowledge proofs, you know, ZK snarks mm -hmm. that are implemented into Ethereum. And because just think for a moment, you, you pay for, let's say, NordVPN or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to pay with your credit card. Mm -hmm. Well, they actually accept Bitcoin now, mm -hmm. but let's say you have to pay with your credit card, and that's all information. You're when you put in your credit card and you put in your address and all that stuff, yeah. that's a level of reducing the privacy that you're hoping mm -hmm. to achieve with a VPN. Right. So actually cryptocurrency payments yes. become very important, I yeah. think. Yeah, and it's important for a network. So we've created probabilistic micropayments at Orchid, and that essentially allows us to unlink the transactions on Ethereum and also scale Ethereum. So it's kind of like a lottery ticket system. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important. Um, it, I guess, and that was going to be a bit of my next question, maybe you can expand a bit on it past the, the lottery system, mm -hmm. is that Ethereum is a public network, you know, yeah. and most, it's, you know, you can look into any Ethereum address and see, well, oh, that person's got ORCID mm -hmm. tokens, I wonder what they're doing, right? And yeah. so, yeah. is that a concern? And if so, how do we try to actually ensure privacy of mm -hmm. people who are using a public network, yeah. but yes. who are then paying for a private Absolutely, network. yeah. So the first is through the probabilistic micropayments uh, that increases privacy. And also we have a multi-hop multi functionality. So uh, you go to one hop and then the next hop doesn't know your former hop. So it increases privacy on the network. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. I think services like this are going to be just absolutely important moving forward because we're, we're a really long way away from 
you know, a revolution in the internet in terms of having this fully decentralized internet. And even when we do have a fully decentralized internet, unless everyone's mm -hmm. running some kind of zero knowledge proof sort of technology, we're still going to have these needs for, you know, virtual private networks. Absolutely. And and I don't think that anytime soon China's or the Chinese government is going mm -hmm. to be magically relinquishing control of mm -hmm. their society. Mm -hmm. So. VPNs, I think, will be a very important part. They're already an important part of the internet infrastructure we have mm -hmm. today and will continue to be so in the future. Yeah, so. absolutely. Very yeah. interesting. Tegan, thank you so much for coming on and telling everyone a bit about ORCID. If you want to learn some more about ORCID, there'll be a link down below in the description. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.